We have talked about the linear and logistic regression in the previous videos, where you have also learned that while we can directly compute an optimal solution for the linear one, this is not possible for the logistic regression. So what do we do about this? Let's start by revisiting some of your math knowledge. You might remember how to compute different characteristics of a function, such as an extreme value or a saddle point. This is usually done by setting the first or second derivative of a function to zero and computing the corresponding values for where this happens. But what if we take a random point of our function, which is not a minimum or maximum, and compute the first derivative? What we will get for this point, as you might remember, is the gradient of the function in that specific point, which shows us the direction in which the function continues. Now this is quite useful as we get an idea of how steep the function looks like in the given point. This is also quite useful as we can take this gradient to traverse closer to a minimum or maximum. But in our context, we care more about finding a minimum. So how do we do that? The key term in this situation is gradient descent. If you have already had some experience with machine learning, or specifically deep learning, this might sound very fam familiar to you, as gradient descent is also used as optimization method for deep neural networks, which, in the end, also are just functions. But back to our less complex functions. With gradient descent, we take a step into the opposite direction of the gradient to get closer to a local minimum. A step size is usually a fraction of the gradient value itself, which can be parameterized by the so-called learning rate. So to sum up again, we calculate the gradient for a given point, use our learning rate to compute the fraction of the gradient, and take a step along the function into the opposite direction of our gradient. Eventually, we want to do this until convergence, at which point we have reached the local minimum. Unfortunately, this method does not guarantee to find the global minimum of a function, but depending on the step size, we could skip out of a local minimum and find another, hopefully better one. There are plenty more methods to avoid getting stuck in a local minimum, but this would be too much for this course at this moment. So back to our regression problem. How does this method help us here? If you think back at our models, we have some learnable parameters of the function itself and a loss term at the end the sum of squared errors. Depending on the choice of learnable parameters, our loss changes to the better or worse. Now this can be abstracted into a loss surface in our parameter space. You can imagine it similar to a mountain landscape, where the peaks of a mountain are our maximum values of the loss surface and the valleys are local minima. Similar to what we did with our simple two-dimensional function, we can compute the gradient at any given point on that surface, calculate the step size, and take a step into the opposite direction of the gradient. In our metaphor, this would equal to climbing down the mountain to reach a valley taking the fastest route. And this will be repeated for a couple times, which finally leads us to our iterative training procedure using gradient descent.